lecture, we are going to investigate the concept of coordination mechanism at the macro level. Referring to coordination among units. Coordination mechanisms at the macro level are those mechanisms put in place to solve the coordination problems within organizational unit. In other words, we need mechanisms that ensure coordination and alignment between the different organizational units. To achieve this coordination and alignment, we can implement several coordination mechanisms, starting from the coordination mechanisms at the micro level, which are mutual adjustment, direct supervision, process standardization, output standardization, and competency standardization. We talk about this kind of mechanism in details in another lecture. This coordination mechanism at the micro level can be in fact put in place not only inside the organizational unit, but also between organizational units. For example, there can be mutual adjustment through an informal exchange of information between the responsible of the marketing and sales unit and the responsible of the production unit, or standardization of output between different organizational units. We have also specific coordination mechanisms to put in place at the macro level. The first and simplest one are liaison roles. Liaison roles are dedicated to horizontal coordination between two organizational units. In other words, we can decide to have within one unit a specific person that is dedicated to coordinate and share information uh, with another unit. For example, in the production unit, we can formally identify a person that is in charge of coordination with R&D in order to align R&D strategies with the production technology of the organization. Similar, we can have a liaison role between staff unit and line unit. The typical example is an HR person that is dedicated to support another unit, such as uh, the sales unit, in managing the workforce. Another coordination mechanism at the macro level is the integration manager. Integration managers are somehow similar to liaison roles, but they are different because they are not dedicated to just two organizational units. Indeed, they are specific organizational positions that are in charge of coordinating and integrating activities that are related to the same output across different units. They typically don't belong to a specific organizational unit, but they are independent organizational positions. Typical example of integration manager is the product manager, in charge of coordinate the development, the production and the sale of a specific product, supervising the process across the different organizational units involved. Another mechanism of coordination between different organizational units is represented by interfunctional teams. Interfunctional teams can be permanent or temporary teams that are composed by people coming from different units. These teams are created to solve specific problems. For example, a team dedicated to the design of business processes within the organization is an example of a temporary interfunctional team. Instead, the periodical meeting of management committee is an example of permanent interfunctional team. We also have two other coordination mechanisms at the macro level which are not related to organizational configuration of the company, but they play a fundamental coordination role. One is uh, represented by the planning and control system. Planning and control systems define for each organizational unit which are the desired output and the desired objectives. to be achieved, and the action to put in place to achieve them. Moreover, with the planning and control systems, we can measure and verify if and how the goals have been achieved. Typical examples of these systems are the budgeting plans, the strategic plans, and the improvement plans. The other and last coordination mechanism, which is not strictly related to the organizational configuration, is represented by the management information systems. Management information systems are the technologies dedicated to the exchange of information and to the communication within the company. This mechanism is uh, fundamental 
to support coordination and integration among organizational units. We can have uh, uh, vertical information system and or horizontal information systems. The vertical information systems uh, support the um, vertical spreading of information within the company through the different hierarchical levels. Typical example of these are reporting system, dashboards and budgeting systems. The horizontal information systems support uh, the horizontal flow of information. Typical example of these are ERP systems, internet or knowledge management systems. To conclude, we must remind that coordination mechanisms at the micro level and coordination mechanisms at the macro level can and should exploit synergies among them. In particular, the table helps us to recap which are the most useful coordination mechanisms at the micro level for coordination at the macro level, with the dark green intersection showing a strong synergy and the light green intersection showing a less strong but still useful synergy among the different micro and macro coordination mechanisms.